So in this situation, we want to rewrite each of these absolute value uh, functions as a piecewise function. So we're going to look at the different conditions that need um, that we need to consider. By remember, uh, in that last example, we asked ourselves what makes this a zero, and that's what we're going to kind of split our absolute value and redefine it. So again, what makes this zero? Uh, x plus five will be equal to zero when x equals negative five. So our function is going to be defined around negative five. So when x is less than or sorry, when x is greater than or equal to negative five, or when x is less than negative five. Um, so if I pick a number that is greater than negative five, we don't ever really want to use five because that's just going to give us zero and it doesn't tell us too much. Um, so if I want to pick a number greater than negative five, let's use zero. Plug it in, zero plus five is five. The absolute value of five is five. So my simplified argument stayed the same. So that means that for all values of x greater than or equal to negative five, the absolute value is just going to be what we started with on the inside. For x values less than negative five, let's say we use negative six, negative six plus five is negative one. Absolute value of negative one is positive one. So it changes signs. So we would take the opposite of this. So the opposite of x plus five. And if you wanted to, you could simplify this by distributing the negative through and you'd get x plus five and negative x minus five. And that would be for x greater than or equal to negative five. And this would be for x less than negative five. And this could be your definition for your piecewise function. Um, either of these is correct. It doesn't really matter too much what you do there, okay? Uh, now for this one, we have this little plus three here, and that actually doesn't impact the, the cutoff point. We still only care about what's inside the absolute value to determine the conditions for our domains, right? So x minus four, what makes that zero? Well, that happens when x is equal to four. So that's gonna be kind of where we split our absolute value. So we have uh, for x greater than or equal to four, and for x less than four, what do we have? So if I pick a number greater than four, let's say six. Six minus four is two, the absolute value of two is two. So the inside of my, uh, my simplified argument stayed the same as a result of taking the absolute value. So that means that for values of x greater than or equal to four, this is just going to be what we started with, and then the plus three kind of just tacks along for the ride. Uh, for x minus four, so if I plug in, or x less than four, sorry, I plug in zero. Zero minus four is negative four. Absolute value of negative four is positive four. So the signs changed, right? So that means that my output is the opposite of what I have inside. So we're gonna take the opposite of this here and then add three to it. Uh, if you wanted to simplify this one, you could. Negative four plus three, that is negative one. So it's x minus one. Here you can distribute the negative through, so we'll have negative x plus four plus three, so that'd be negative x plus seven, and this is for x greater than or equal to four, and for x less than four. So that would be my piecewise definition for that. And let's look at one more. So in this last one, again, we wanna figure out what would make the inside equal to zero. Uh, and this happens, so what makes 2x plus 6 equal to 0? Uh, we can subtract 6 and divide by 2, so that's when x is negative 3. So negative 3 is going to be kind of our splitting point. So we have uh, y equals, and then we have x greater than or equal to negative 3, and x less than negative 3. Okay. Uh, so a number greater than negative three, we could use zero again. Zero plus uh, two times zero is zero plus six is six. The absolute value of that is six. So focusing just on what's on the inside, the inside part is going to be the same when we take its out uh, for x values greater than a negative three. So the output is the same as the input for x values greater than negative three. Uh, so we end up with the two x plus six. Now this negative is being applied, 
and it's taking the opposite of whatever you get out. So we still get that negative out in front. If we look at an x value less than negative three, let's say we plugged in negative four, two times negative four is negative eight, negative eight plus six is negative two. The absolute value of negative two is positive two. So for the argument two x plus six, through taking the absolute value, we end up getting the opposite. But this negative out here means we're gonna ultimately take the opposite of that. Okay, so if we want to simplify this one, distribute the negative through, we have negative 2x minus 6 for x greater than or equal to negative 3. And then with these negative times a negative, it essentially just cancels, giving us this 2x plus 6 for x less than negative 3. Uh, and this would be our piecewise definition for this absolute value.